we, we created the possibility of a platform that's free of charge to its end users with commercial services around them. In the sort of dream that that might define the future in all sorts of different ways. And uh, we really have seen that Ubuntu has moved into the mainstream in a bunch of areas. Um, uh, some of the things that we were doing were clearly never going to be commercially sustainable. Other things clearly will be commercially sustainable sure. or are already commercially sustainable. Um, as long as we stay a pure, purely private company, we have complete discretion as to whether we carry things that are not commercially sustainable sure. at all. Um, in looking at it, um, we came to a consensual view amongst the leads at the company that we should put ourselves on the path to being a public company. Yeah. And so that meant that we couldn't have on our books effectively very substantial projects which clearly had no commercial angle to them at all. It doesn't mean that we would consider changing the terms of Ubuntu, for example, sure. because it's foundational to everything yeah. we do, and we don't have to. Effectively. One of the things I'm most proud of is in the last seven years, Ubuntu itself became completely sustainable. I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, and Please don't. Ubuntu could continue. Yeah, <laughs> look both ways so, hey, when you don't cross. Don't tell the bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> right? um, but uh, but Ubuntu itself is completely sustainable, which is kind of magical, right? Here's a platform that is a yeah. world class enterprise platform. It's completely freely available, and yet it is sustainable, right? So that's a magical thing that happened. Jane Silber is largely yeah. to thank for that. Um, there are huge possibilities for us in the enterprise beyond that in terms of really defining how cloud infrastructure is built, how cloud applications are operated and so on. And in IoT, looking at that next wave of possibility, innovators creating stuff on IoT. Uh, and all of that is ample for us to essentially put ourselves on course towards an IPO around that. But we had this big chunk of work, which was Unity, which I really love. I think um, the engineering of Unity 8 was pretty spectacularly good, and the deep ideas of how you bring these different convert these form factors together was pretty beautiful. Sure. Um, but I couldn't make an argument for that essentially to sit on Canonical's books any longer if we were going to go on yeah. a path towards an IPO. So what you should see um, uh, at some stage, and I think fairly soon, we'll announce that we've broken even on all of the pieces that we do commercially effectively without Unity. Um, at some stage after that, we will probably take a round of investment, which will be a growth round of investment. Um, and that would be aimed at then becoming a public company in due course. Um, we're not in a situation where we need to kind of um, flip-flop based on what VCs might tell us to do. We have a pretty clear view of what our customers like. We found good market traction and product fit. Um, both on cloud and on, and on IoT, um, and the team, I think, is justifiably excited at that decision. Yeah. Okay. Emotionally, I never want to go through a process, process like that again. It was, okay. uh, you know, I made some miscalculations around Unity. I really thought that industry would rally to the idea of having a, a free platform that was independent. Um, but then I also don't regret having the will to go and do that, right? Lots yeah. of people will complain yeah. about the things that, the options that they have, but not go and create other options. It takes a bit of spine and sometimes quite a lot of money to go and try and create those options. Like that.